Okay, so now the next lesson would be about memory. I like memory. Memory is broad. Memory is is memory is is deep. There are quite a bit of concepts about memory, but we want to break it down into some of the most basic ones. First, I asked you in one of the previous videos, but I'm going to ask you again. If I were to ask you what is your oldest memory, most of you would have your oldest life memory at five or six years of age. If that's the case, it's because your hippocampus finishes maturation by five or six years of age, allowing the brain to encode its earliest memory. Our early school, school years are early, childhood years are pretty much characterized by what you call a childhood amnesia. We cannot remember what happened in the first years of our life. That is because your hippocampus was not ready for work yet. But when we talk about memory, memory can be divided between implicit and explicit. Explicit are the things that we do consciously know, remember. Implicit are things that may not necessarily be in our conscious side, but we have not forgotten. If you see a person that you have not seen in years, if you listen to a song that you have not heard in years, it might trigger a lot of memories, but you were not conscious of it. So that would be more of an implicit kind of memory, you know? Memory depends on the context. Memory depends on the state. Context. Doesn't it happen to you that you may be in your, on your room and you feel like you want something, so you go to the kitchen, and when you get to the kitchen, Sometimes you open the fridge and you look and you stare at it. You don't know what you wanted, right? Put it back, go back to your room, and as soon as you get back to the room, oh, you remember what you wanted. Because memory depends on the context. If you were in one specific context and you knew that you needed something, it's more likely that you would remember when you go back to that context. Memory depends on the state. So when you're angry, you may remember a lot of things that make you feel angry, but when you come down, you forget why you were angry in the first place. If you get angry again, all those things will come back to your mind because your memory depends on your state. Happy people are more likely to remember happy things. Depressed people are more likely to remember depressing events. It really depends on the state as well. But what I want to emphasize is the overall major model of memory. The major model of memory was proposed following on the footsteps of cognitive theory. Let's try to understand the mind from a scientific perspective. And they created an analogy. The human mind is not only about taking information, it's about processing information, similar to a computer. So they called it the information processing model. You have four steps of the information processing model. You have your input. Input is when you receive the information, crosses through your mind. If I were to ask you, what is your name? It begins with the input when you listen to it. Goes next to the storage. You look out into your memory to try to find out the answer for it. And you say, my name is. Contra processes. This happens when you struggle finding an answer. Doesn't it happen to you that you may encounter a person that you know but you cannot remember the name. And you look at the person and you're trying to remember, and it's so embarrassing, doesn't it? You try to remember the name, but it doesn't come to your mind right away. That's because you're stuck in the control processes. The analogy is that you're opening a file cabinet and you're looking for the file. What is the correct answer? What is the correct name? Lastly, if all those have been in place, the fourth step is output. You finally know, so you verbalize it. You say it. You express it. Well, in the most commonly known model for memory that we have today, within those four steps, we can understand how memory works. Memory is divided in three major different processes. Sensory, short-term, long-term. Sensory memory is information that you encode through your five senses. You have your five senses, right? You have your sense of addition, vision, taste, smell, and touch you continually receive information through those five senses. But that information lasts in your mind for less than a split second. There is a famous study by Nickerson and Adams, 1979, 
in which they were asking people if they could remember the shape of a penny. Most people couldn't. Even though you may have seen a lot of pennies in your life, if it's meaningless, what is the point of remembering that information? That sensory memory, it lasts in your mind split second. If information though transfers from sensory, it may go into short-term memory. Short-term memory lasts in your brain for a couple seconds longer, you know? That is encoded through your hippocampus. In your hippocampus, memories are stored. For me, the equivalent when you're working on a Word file, you know how you have your save icon, the little picture so you can click on it, then you save your file? That is your hippocampus. You save that information. If it's meaningful, if it's not meaningful, then you have to rehearse and rehearse. If you're taking a test and you cannot really find an application for that information and you struggle to remember, what do we do? We rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. May not be the best way to remember information, but it's something that we use. If information now transfers from short term to long term, in essence, you can think of the hippocampus transferring the information and spreading out the information through the rest of your brain. At that part, you're in the long term memory. There is, as far as we know, capacity, like a limit to the capacity for how many memories you can store. The capacity is limitless. But depends on the context, depends on the state that we're in, depends on whether it's implicit or explicit is how many memories do we encode. We have no limit for it, but the memories that you hold may be altered by the state in which you're in, the context in which you may be in, the willingness, and other factors. But in the end, according to the information processing model, the main model of memory is divided in three areas, your sensory, your short term, and your long term. If you know that basic model, then you have the basics for what is memory like.